Hello everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today for our digital open day. Uh, my name is Dr. Darren Wright. I am uh, a lecturer in the School of Physics and Astronomy at the University of Leicester. I'm also the head of first year teaching. So if any of you decide that you're going to come and join us to do your studies, then I'm one of the first people that you'll uh, interact with. So what I'm going to do today is just give a, uh, a talk about uh, what it's like to study at Leicester, study physics uh, and a little bit about the student experience. So I'll just uh, start my slides. Right, so here at Leicester we have a very long history of, uh, of physics and particularly space science. Um, we are a medium sized department. Um, with a very strong heritage of that in that. So we've been looking at uh, space sciences for over 50 years now. Uh, we are uh, kind of a medium sized department, which is good, which means that uh, as a student, you get to interact quite closely with lots of other uh, lecturers as well. And it also means that uh, the groups that you work in are not too, too large. Some universities have um, physics cohorts which are like 300 in size here our typical intake is about 120 students in the first year which is uh, so much nicer and it means that we also uh, get on really nicely as a community as well um, <clears throat> our courses are, are all uh, accredited by the institute of physics um, which means that and that's the national institution for physics in the uk and they uh, accredit us which means that uh, we we teach you everything you need to do you know, related to physics our teaching quality is very high. It's been uh, very highly praised over the recent years, and we've won prizes as well. If that's uh, if that's important uh, in our teaching quality. In terms of research income, we also are one of the highest uh, income earners in the country per per number of staff. So there's a metric by which, uh, for the number of people like me, number of lecturers that exist in the department, uh, the amount of research income we, we bring in for studying physics and, and doing things like space science, for example, is uh, second only to the University of Cambridge in the country. And typically we attract about 14 to 15 million pounds a year for research. And what's really nice about that is that the research facilities that we uh, that we um, the research facilities that we uh, bring or have in the university uh, means that you get to interact with them as students in our department. So here we've got a slide. This is a kind of a, a, a moving slide with images and so on on it just to demonstrate some of the projects that we've been involved with uh, over the years. You can see James Webb Space Telescope there. We are an institute which is involved with that, so we get data directly from that. Uh, system uh, and as potential third and fourth year project students you would get to work with data like that and you might well be the very first people to see this uh, sort of data and the new images that's coming from that so it's quite exciting we have lots of other uh, images in uh, this display we've got various rockets taking off different projects Cassini was a mission that went to Saturn to study Saturn for many years it's now no longer functioning Mars Express and lots of computational uh, uh, astrophysics as well uh, the, that relates to the image in the lower uh, left here. We have here a, a supercomputer facility called Dirac, which is designed to study um, the evolution of galaxies and how they interact. It's an astrophysical fluids facility, and you need huge computers to be able to model the evolution of millions of stars all at the same time. So that's hosted here in the UK. It's one of the biggest computer systems in the, in the UK. But we're also you can also see here in the top left uh, people designing one of the instruments that's now on board a, a satellite called uh, Bepi Colombo, which is on its way to Mercury to study that system as well. That's in transit for several years and we'll get there in 2025. Uh, on the top right, we have uh, one of the domes of the university's uh, observatory. So we have we have more than one observatory here, and these then can be used by students to observe during during the evenings, but also uh, for research projects. So you actually get to do things, for example, uh, searching for extrasolar planets, new planets outside our solar system, which could potentially harbor life. And then the lower uh, right, we have uh, a, a, an image of one of our um, uh, research labs designing equipment such as uh, was going to go to Mars, uh, to try and search for life on Mars. 
So there's lots of really exciting research possibilities here at Leicester. In addition to that, we have this uh, new innovation, which is called Space Park Leicester, which is a new building, uh, which was part funded by Leicester City Council and local space businesses, or national space businesses, I should say, in order to try and facilitate better space, space research. Uh, we're a space research intensive uh, department and we work with uh, industries such as Airbus, BAE Systems, Rolls-Royce, etc. These are people that build satellites in order to further progress uh, our understanding of, uh, of space through space research. Uh, so this is a brand new facility, it exists quite close to the university and uh, we're hopeful that uh, students coming to us will soon be able to work with industrial partners on projects and internships. OK, for example, Rolls Royce, which will be really a good bonus for you when you come to the university. So <clears throat> in terms of courses, then um, we offer currently offer three different uh, degree streams, physics, physics with astrophysics and physics with space science, reflecting our long history in these areas. You can choose either a BSc, which is a three year course or an integrated masters, which is the so-called MPhys, that's a four year course. Uh, if you apply to us, it doesn't matter which course you select, you can very easily change between those courses whether it's a BSc or an MPhys or whichever degree stream you want, you can choose between them or select between them when you come here, it's easy to change. We also offer a, a foundation year course uh, for those people that want it. And in addition to that, you can also add in either a year in industry or a year abroad. And we'll come back to talk about those uh, in a few minutes. Our typical offers then are at A level, AAB, ABB or uh, 30 points for the International Baccalaureate. OK, we'll talk a bit more about that later on as well. So if you're interested in doing uh, a study abroad, we offer uh, the possibility of working abroad for a year in a number of different countries. I've just got four listed there, for example, South Africa, the Netherlands, Canada, Australia. Uh, this adds an extra year to your study. Uh, and usually this is done in your third year. Um, so if you're doing a BSc, that would turn your degree into a four year degree. If you're doing an MPhys, then your four years would become five. A lot of students find this extremely rewarding uh, and you get to study uh, obviously in a different nation and also diversify your, your experiences, which is important uh, for your student experience while you're studying. In terms of industrial placements, we offer the opportunity to spend a year in industry as well. We have uh, lots of links with lots of different industries in the UK. Uh, a lot of these are space based, uh, not all. Uh, I've got a few of them uh, listed here. I'm not going to through, go through all of them. Uh, so, for example, top one there is the UK Space Agency. When you spend a year uh, in industry, uh, that is a paid um, year. So the industry that takes you on will pay you a salary for that year. Again, it adds an extra year to your studies. Uh, but the nice thing is that every student that has ever worked in an industrial placement has always been offered a job in that industry at the end. So that's really good. Um, we do ask for years abroad or years in industry that you achieve a certain level at the end of your second year exams, which is I think 55% in order to be able to complete the third year, either in industry or abroad, just to let you know. But some really exciting opportunities working uh, in industrial placements. <clears throat> as well as studying whilst you're here, it's also very important to have a pleasant student experience, to enjoy your time in Leicester uh, and to be, uh, to, be, um, uh, to be well looked after whilst you're here. Our department prides itself on being a very welcoming uh, working environment um, and it's a small enough uh, department that everybody gets on really well and uh, it's really welcoming. There's a nice community feeling here uh, between not just within the students but also between the students and the staff. We offer lots of different uh, uh, facilities to help with your your learning. So we, we offer a tutorial system where you work in small groups with a personal tutor, somebody like me, who you would have for the full three or four years of your uh, stay with us. And they're typically uh, groups of five or six students would meet once a week for about an hour uh, with your tutor. 
We also offer an open door policy, which means that you can come and talk to a, a staff member uh, basically at any time or pretty short notice uh, to discuss any form of issues, whether those are personal issues or uh, academic study related issues. Um, many, many physics departments don't offer this and you can't get to see staff members uh, very readily. But here we offer that because we, we like to make sure our students are, uh, are happy. Um, we offer a lot of study spaces, which again is quite rare in, in, in schools in the university and other universities. Many students have to go and work in the library. In this department, we have uh, study spaces for you to sit in, comfortable areas to work in and places to uh, sit and eat as well. So we also have a, a student common room where you can have a cup of tea, you can play a board game, uh, warm up your lunch and things like this as well. We have computer suites in-house as well, so you can do your research activities or write reports as, as required for your studies. Uh, there's a lot of active student societies here. There's the Physics Society and the Astronomy Society, uh, which host lots of different uh, exciting activities and also tend to have uh, annual uh, trips abroad, for example. So last year, uh, the uh, Astronomy Society visited the birthplace of uh, Galileo in Florence, which is a lovely thing to do. Uh, what's really important is that students here enjoy a really strong student voice, which means that you get to feed back um, your views to us, such that if there are various issues, uh, then we get to hear about them and act upon them. We'll talk a little bit more about that a bit later on. This is just a slide highlighting some of the fun activities which go on uh, between our students and things like this. You can see all sorts of different uh, activities. Uh, there are people having meals out. And notice that everybody's smiling. Uh, it really is a friendly, welcoming place, uh, which is something that's it's really good when you're new, especially to living away from home, for example. You come here and you'll have a really good time. And there are various activities in there you can see uh, related to uh, research activities. Uh, the one in the middle is uh, one of the uh, observatories on the top of Mauna Kea in, uh, in um, Hawaii. That is something that uh, our PhD students visit, for example. So <clears throat> your degree then is intended to be flexible. I said before that you can change flavor of degree or switch between master's and bachelor's degrees uh, very straightforwardly and you can add a year abroad or a year in industry in there as well. We also offer <coughs> um, vocational modules in year three which we'll come to talk to we'll talk about in a minute which means that it uh, gives you extra training ready for when you go out and get a job. We're not here just to teach you physics we're here to make you employable such that you get a good job 95% of our students get good career jobs within 18 months of leaving us. So that's a really nice thing to know as well. So let's have a look. Um, so in terms of, we offer lots of different types of learning mechanism, if you like, it's called active learning. We start with a lecture, okay, which is a way where we teach you a bit of particular science but uh, lectures are then supported by things like workshops uh, and core exercises, which are group activities uh, and uh, allows you new ways to learn. And it's all about uh, helping to facilitate your learning such that you learn and remember how to, to, uh, to use the physics that we're teaching you. Um, problem solving is a very important skill and we teach you that. There's something called physics challenge, which we'll talk about shortly. Uh, and then the third year projects also uh, sometimes involve industrial partners as well, which is distinct from the uh, year abroad. The important thing is that when you're doing research projects in your third and fourth years, you're working with internationally renowned research scientists with really uh, hot off the press data, for example, from the James Webb Space Telescope. Right, so what do we teach then? Well, we teach everything that uh, the Institute of Physics uh, believe should be in, in a modern physics degree and that includes a core of, uh, of certain physics modules for example electricity and magnetism dynamics light and matter waves and quanta and so on the, this lists all the things that we cover here uh, as you move through different years into the years three and four you then do more and more electives 
as appropriate to your particular degree stream. So if you are a uh, physics with astrophysics students, then you get to opt, opt for more of the astrophysics uh, modules and so on. In the years one and two, then you for, follow a core uh, set of modules, including maths. We teach you maths as well to support the physics that you're doing. And then you specialize more in year threes and three and four. <coughs> In terms of employability, then people sort of say, you know, what kind of jobs can you get as a physicist? I honestly believe it's easier to tell, for me to tell you what kind of jobs you can't get as a physicist. I can pretty much guarantee that you can't probably uh, translate ancient uh, French texts into English with your physics degree. Perhaps you can. Perhaps you can write an algorithm to do that. But here we have a list of the types of uh, uh, job jobs that you can do with a physics degree. We've just listed a few here because you're learning all sorts of different skills. You're very good at numeracy, so maths, problem solving, scientific writing, uh, analytical thinking, group working as well, which is very important when you go out into industry to be able to work with other people. So we've got I've just listed here a few of the different kind of activities that you can go get jobs in. So we've got finance, defense, computing, computer programming is a huge one. We'll be teaching you about computer programming. You get the ch chance to learn at least three different languages whilst you're uh, working here. Uh, lots of space engineering possibilities as well. We get a lot of people working in space industry after this, uh, but also teaching. OK, teaching is a very good. Um, uh, vocation okay and there's a great demand for science teachers in the uk so first and second year teaching i touched on this before uh, there follows uh, the following set or the set listed here of type of different different types of activities you have a set of lectures for each module that you undertake there are four uh, physics modules and two math modules in year one each has core lectures OK, and then they're associated with that. There are group uh, workshops where you, you work on problems. You also have to undertake laboratory, laboratory physics. Every professional physicist needs to know how to uh, undertake lab experiments. So we teach you that as well. That's part of the, uh, the, the, uh, the course as well. Small group teaching through tutorials. And then there are the electives at the end, which again are your choice and you would tend to follow the electives which you decide you want to do depending on your degree stream. So in year one, for example, we offer four different um, elective modules, introduction to space physics, introduction to uh, astrophysics, introduction to applied physics and introduction to uh, modern physics. And you can choose, <coughs> excuse me, to do uh, three out of the four of those in your first year. And then as you proceed into year two, those modules then become the intermediate step and the advanced modules become uh, apparent in years uh, three and four. But you can tailor your degree to what your interests are. So this is a typical working week. It is a fairly intensive uh, uh, degree program. You work quite hard in a physics degree, but you are rewarded by very, very good jobs at the end. OK. Most of our, the vast majority of our students get really good jobs at the end of it, okay, as a reward for the work that you put in. The total working hours are typically 35 to 40 hours a week. Some of that is uh, contact time, as you can see listed here, uh, about 19 hours, including all the lectures and tutorials and feedback sessions and workshops, uh, with another 15 to 20 hours of private study time. So you're given problems to do at home, and background reading on the subjects that we're teaching you in lectures. Um, so it's pretty much the same as any working week for people that work in a, in a standard job. Um, in terms of assessment, 30% uh, of every module you do, uh, core module is uh, coursework, okay, involves a test and work that you do throughout the year. And then there's a 70% exam in the summer to, to, to do as well. Uh, and then elective modules and lab modules are 100% coursework. As you move into th year three and four, you get to do more and more specialist options. Um, <clears throat> and I will talk about uh, physics challenge a bit more in a moment. Uh, there are a, a set of advanced electives, okay, for people who are really interested in various things related to their degree stream. So I've listed a few here. Uh, supermassive black holes is always very popular, very popular course with the astrophysicists. And then we have the space plasma physics course, which deals with space physics as well. 
but that's not everything. There's there's lots of different things that's shown on there. Uh, in addition to that, we also have vocational courses offered in year three. So, for example, I run the physics and education courses uh, course with uh, in partnership with local schools, which gives our students the opportunity to go out and get teaching experience for those people who think they might be interested in teaching as a career uh, ahead of signing up for a teacher training program. You can get some experience of that. We teach you uh, various different programming languages while you're here. We'll start in year one with something called R. Uh, you'll get to experience C as well, and then you can opt to do Python uh, and numerical methods in uh, year three. Uh, scientific data analysis is also a very popular one as well, and that's really important again for people who uh, want to go out and use this kind of thing in industry later on. So it's all about getting you trained in the right areas that you're interested in and making you employable. Okay. In terms of third and fourth year specialisms, there's this thing called physics challenge, which is a bit more uh, uh, unique compared to other lecture courses. There are no lectures involved, in fact, and what you do is you work on uh, non-standard problems as groups uh, and try and figure out how to solve them. So, for example, these are three of the questions that are have been asked of the students. I'm not going to go into e every one of them. The middle one's my favourite. Uh, which is asking how much energy uh, would be required for the Death Star to destroy a planet uh, and whether that's actually realistic. So could they actually build a Death Star uh, with enough energy to destroy a planet? The, the, good, the, the, uh, it, the good answer is the fact that there isn't possible, thank goodness, uh, so we're not in any danger. Um, <clears throat> in third and fourth years then, the, there are various other uh, projects that you can undertake. We have these industrial research projects. So these are distinct from the year in industry. These are projects that you can do in year three, working with local uh, industries and national industries. We've got Airbus and Rolls Royce again in there. Also some things, Leicester should be beekeepers. Lots of interesting projects. Students get to work on those in groups and really be able to apply the physics that they've learned. So they're, they're hugely popular. You'll also undertake a, a, a research project in both year three and year four, and that can be based on very uh, recent data collected by various instruments as part of our research programs here in Leicester. And then down there at the bottom, we've got the thing called physics special topics where students in year four form an editorial board. They write scientific papers uh, on subjects that they think about themselves and also review uh, papers from other students. I think we've got a slide related to that here. Um, it's actually really interesting. Some of the subjects that the students study uh, are very uh, kind of out of this world, but have often been picked up uh, from press offices around the world. So here we have, uh, this was a few years ago now, uh, one of the news readers in CNN went through uh, one of our students' um, projects, which was to discuss this, the physics behind Batman and how real it, it, it was. Uh, we've got the physics of Star Wars. All of these things gained uh, press coverage and appeared on international news, which is really good for the students and for the department as well. Right, so we're coming towards the end of my presentation. We've got uh, just to talk a little bit about the application process. So uh, application applications through UCAS is already open. You can apply anytime you like. I'd recommend that you apply earlier rather than later. As soon as you apply, we can give you uh, a, a, an offer uh, to come to Leicester. The uh, the deadline for applications, I believe, is the 31st of January. I suggest that you don't leave it to the last minute. Um, as we've said, uh, as I said earlier on, uh, we offer uh, grades AAB to ABB. That's what we ask as our entry tariff. Um, but um, it is possible to get in here actually with lower grades uh, through clearing. Uh, so don't be disheartened if that's a little bit higher than you, you were expecting. Please do apply anyway and we'll see what kind of offer we can offer, we can make to you. If you apply to us and we, we uh, give you an offer, we will provide you with or uh, offer you uh, the ability to attend an offer holder day after Christmas. We will be running three, uh, three or four of these between January and April, where you can come along to the department uh, and experience what it's like to be a student here and undertake, undertake things like workshops and so on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so if you put that 
submit your application. We can then send you all of the materials that you need uh, in, in order to give you a feel for what it's like to study here. Uh, but it'd be really nice to welcome you after Christmas on one of our offer holder days. Um, so just to finish off then now, I have a couple of slides with frequently asked questions, uh, which might be useful to you. Uh, one of the key ones there, at number uh, right at the top is, do I need to buy lots of textbooks? In year one, all textbooks, there are only two actually, are provided for you. We teach all of our physics course from a single, uh, single physics text. Um, you're provided a free copy of that on arrival. We also provide you with our own home written uh, maths book as well. So you don't need to buy any maths books or physics books rather in year one. All books that are required for subsequent courses are available through our library, uh, either as a physical copy or you can download the PDF version to read on your computer. OK, so the gone are the days of having to spend a large amount of money on, on books to study. In terms of staff, we have over 40 teaching staff like me and uh, we also have research students and research staff as well in the department so uh, typically during a module that you're taught you'll have uh, two or three uh, lecturers like me interacting with you in various workshops and so on how do the marks from each year make up my final degree your first year is a probationary year um, you need to pass that year to get through to, to year two uh, and after that, if you're doing a BSc, you can see there that your final degree mark is based one third on your year two and two thirds on your marks from year three. And likewise, for the MPhys four year degree, your uh, marks are um, weighted according to 20 percent, 30 percent and 50 percent for years two, three and four. I talked about different societies and clubs. We have all sorts of different things at the university that you can participate in, ranging from music and, and science right through to really quite bizarrely Quidditch, where we have teams of students which run around the park with broom handles between their knee, knees chasing a ball. I find that slightly bizarre, but you, there is an official Quidditch society here. How many students do we take in per year? Typically, if you come to join us next year, we will take in somewhere of the order of 120 students in the first year, which is a nice size um, cohort. OK, it means that you get on together as a, as a group, but also there's a, a good interaction between uh, students and staff. OK, it's not too big uh, and the lectures aren't huge. For example, the capacity of lectures is not huge. Number of hours we talked about before, typically working week 35 to 40 hours and um, over the course of your entire degree program, I know we talked about individual modules earlier on, uh, approximately 50% uh, or more of your work will be uh, based on coursework and typically less than 50% on average across the three or four years will be based on exams, which is good because not everybody likes exams, of course. So that's all I have to say today. Thank you for your attention. I really hope that uh, we'll see you join us uh, next year. Uh, in the meantime, have a good Christmas. Take care. Nice, nice to meet you.